This is our way of just doing a little bit, you know? And I'm sure the good people who are out there, you know, people of other faiths, they can understand this moral decline of society, Jews right. and Christians. So we don't like that our women are out there, you know, they're, they're being prostituted. It's not right. But now how can the brothers defend themselves? Allah's given us the formula, and they're just, their urge is coming out, and they're boiling up inside. And you know what? This is a major sin if you fall into boyfriend, girlfriend, and you're uh, involved in illegal sexual intercourse, pornography is on the rise, no Muslim should have any part in this, what are your comments and suggestions? What I would say is, you know, what Shaitan tries, to, tries to do with you, and you know, when, when the whole John Edwards scandal happened, there mm -hmm. was a whole, I remember Time Magazine or Newsweek did a whole issue on the psychology of a cheater. And in essence, when a person cheats, what they try to do is they try to ignore reality and they try to ignore the consequences of their actions. So for example, a person that's cheating on his wife will not pull out his wallet and show the woman that he's cheating with the pictures of his kids and things of that sort. He wants to ignore reality. He wants to keep that put away. Right? He's going to keep his cell phone on silent. He's not going to be able to talk on the phone and things of that sort with us. But he wants to ignore reality and, and ignore the consequences of his actions so that he can ignore a temporary pleasure. That's the struggle of life with Shaitan. Uh, with the devil and, and of course in this regard. So in uh, pornography, um, you know, engaging in, in, in premarital relationships, this has life changing, you know, this will damage your entire life. Um, in essence, every relationship you go through, uh, a part of you will die with that relationship. You would have had some secrets that you've given to the other person, you would have, you know, had a level of trust now that's going to, to go down the drain. Um, you would have exposed certain things to that person. And so, I mean, every time you go through one of those, a part of you dies. Your capacity to love dies. You become more suspicious of the next partner, the next partner, the next partner. You become vulnerable. Um, in one medical journal, um, I forgot which university, they said that a woman who loses, uh, who loses her virginity by the age, in, while still in high school, is likely to have up to 17 partners in the next five years. Wow, yeah. 17. Yeah, because of the vulnerability, the, f the feeling of vulnerability. So this is for brothers and sisters. You go through a relationship, you go through these things, it will have damaging effects on your life. In essence, um, even in, in marriage, even in marriage, you know, you'll, you'll still have those, those lusts, you'll still have those, you know, you'll still be looking all over the place and you won't be satisfied at home. And the last You'll thing you want is to, yeah. You, and that's what's happening here in this, you know, here today, unfortunately, an over 50% divorce rate in this country. That means when you walk down the aisle in, in the United States, in our country, uh, you know, there's a greater than half of a, there's a greater than half chance that that person is going to be battling you in court for custody or for your wealth. Half a chance. Yeah, more than 50%. The divorce rate has risen, risen above 50% at this point. But don't stop there. We know Islam is the self-defense to all of this right. negativity, evil that happens. And now we look at studies. You mentioned a study from Harvard. Talk about this study of people who have premarital sex and the chances of their relationship coming to an end just because of this. And Islam prevents this from happening if you just follow the way of life from the Creator. Talk about this study from Harvard. Absolutely. Well, uh, again, there's like a 69% chance or something that your uh, your 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 marriage will fail. 70%. Right. Right. Absolutely. Well, I, I think it's it's clear. You know, imagine a society. Just imagine. And I'm not. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll start to we'll start to look at societies that already exist. I'm not talking about that. And it's not a utopian vision. We're talking about how to have happiness in the home. If the husband is not looking all over the place and his only uh, source of sexual satisfaction is his wife. You know, when he comes home, he looks at her, and Islam also encourages the spouses to look good for each other in the home. You know, Abdullah ibn Abbas, the great companion, may Allah be pleased with him. Mm -hmm. Before he would walk into the house, he would start combing his hair, perfume himself, fix his clothes up, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, I like to look good for my wife just as I like her to look good for me. You know, where, there's, where this has encouraged uh, the spouses to dress for one another. So you have the husband who walks into the house with, and takes off his clothes right away with, ironically, with what's called the wife beater. You know? yeah. Then you've got the wife uh, in her, in her uh, Winnie the Pooh pajamas with cream all over her face whenever the husband comes home. And he's just seeing all those billboards that you're talking about. Now he's looking at his wife in that state and she's saying, where have you been and what's wrong with you? Then you know, you're obviously creating something very unhealthy. So the wife will look elsewhere for satisfaction. The husband will look elsewhere for satisfaction whether it's in the form of, of virtual satisfaction, in the form of pornography, which unfortunately 
is, you know, is killing, killing uh, not just our youth today, uh, married couples today. It has life-altering effects. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, the, the, you just will never be able to have happiness in your marriage. So that's why Islam encourages you, focus your gaze on your spouse. Whenever you, you get married, you should look for someone. One of the things that you should look for is someone that you're attracted to. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. But once you're, once you're there, you're there. That's it. You look at these glorified um, individuals online, uh, people that aren't real looking, you know, and, and uh, you know, you indulge in that then nothing is going to satisfy the eye anymore. And again, everything Allah legislates is for your own good also. It's for your own good in this world. So Allah is trying to make it easy for you. So what I would say to those people, because look, I mean, let's face it, pornography and those types of, it's, it's so rampant and people are struggling with it. That would even be good in other areas. They're good Muslims, but they're struggling with that. Just think about the consequences with God. Think about having to meet Allah and having to have that pornography played in front of you and having to explain to Allah that I was watching this in front of you. Because Allah was watching you the whole time. You know, it would get awkward if someone was watching you mm -hmm. while you were watching pornography. Yeah. Allah was watching you. So this is killing your relationship with God. Because in essence, back to the psychology of a cheater, you're purposely trying to ignore God at those moments. No one is sitting there reading Quran while they're watching pornography or remembering God. They're trying to forget that God's watching them at that, at that moment. So. Remember God is watching you. And as a scholar said, Anta turaqib, turaqib Allah, You are in observance of Allah and Allah is in observance of you. you know, so that's, that's what I would say to those brothers. And that way, inshallah, whenever the time comes, you save yourself for the right sister, sister, save yourself for the right brother. Then inshallah, you would find that, uh, you would find that satisfaction in looking at them and you would find that satisfaction in being with them. And the superficial uh, aspects of beauty would definitely go away but the inner beauty would be your focus and that would allow the person to remain beautiful in your eyes for the rest of your life inshallah